morning and I'll be getting a hero's send off when they leave South Africa this morning to represent you and I, the FIFA World Cup, which starts in June. Our reporter, Hlilim Timkulu, will be attending that send off for ceremony later on this morning. She joins me now to chat more about Banyana Banya's preparations going into that World Cup. Shoni, first of all, maybe let's start. Who are we expecting this morning in terms of delegates that are going to be sending Banyana Banyana off? Uh, well, we don't actually know at this point, but we know that it is a Sasso send off, and Sasso has been the sponsor of women's football for the past um, 10 years so I think they are having their own um, due to send them off. Um, we know that over the past weekend the Department of Sport and Recreation had its own send off not just for Banyana Banyana but for other national teams that are leaving shortly to go to their respective World Cups. Well the Proteas have already left to go to the Cricket World Cup and then also for the Netball World Cup. That squad was announced yesterday but the, the World Cup is in July but we are hoping that there will be some suffer people there because for whatever reason they were not at the squad announcement last week um, but and they couldn't answer certain questions about match fees and bonuses and that sort of thing so and we were told that they should be here today so it, we are at least expecting Safa to hope that Safa will be there not just to answer those questions but because it's your national team mm -hmm. they're going to their first World Cup it's a huge moment you expect that they should be there um, at every moment of anything that is happening so yeah indeed uh, I mean the, speaking of I mean since qualifying for this tournament they've blown hot and cold, wouldn't you say? Are they? Uh, is there any concern from Desiree Ellis in terms of like where the team is at the moment? Well, they've blown really cold actually because <laughs> they've played eight matches and they haven't won any of those eight matches. Um, they've drawn three and they've lost five. You know, but the strength of the opposition that they have played against in the past um, in the past five months since they've qualified for the um, Women's World Cup has been much stronger, I think, than um, what they would normally face um, playing, say, even at the AWC. So, you know. I I think that's part of the reason that they have lined up a much stronger position. I mean, they've played the U.S. They played the U.S. two weeks ago. They played against Chile. They played against I'm in the Cyprus Cup where they played um, um, Korea, TPR. They played. Um, um, f um, Finland, you know, so they've had really strong opposition there and teams that are more established and more settled um, and play and more regular. Athletes. Yeah, actually, you know, not um, people who are playing part time or are having to be loaned out to other teams like some of our um, Banyan Banyana players now because their teams are not in action at the moment. So it is very difficult. But I mean, coach um, Desiree has been very frank about that. She's aware that they haven't done as well as she, they would have liked to do well. She's aware, she's admitted that their finishing hasn't been where it should have been, um, that even defensively they, you know, they have made some errors and that sort of thing. So it's not as if she's saying, um, <coughs> excuse me, We're fine. She, yeah, you know, she's, she is aware that this is what's happening and they are aware that against top 20 opposition in that group that things are going to be difficult. I mean, let's be honest, when you, the game you mentioned against the USA, they were not going to beat the USA yeah. and, and the, no circumstances. But like, did that help in terms yeah. of building confidence? Because they seem to have been nervous mm. for Banyan Banyan. Well, I think so. I mean, it was the second time playing the US. They played the US in 2016 when they were preparing for the um, Rio Olympics and they lost just 1-0 there. So there was that background going into it. But... Um, Desiree just said she had been saying before that match and after that match, she had said that the true test for them in terms of where they are would have been that match against the U.S. So I suppose how they played ultimately will sort of give an indication how they're going to do against um, Spain, Germany, um, and I forget who else is in their group now in China um, in terms of that because those three, um, U.S. is number one in the world and mm -hmm. Spain, Germany, and China are in the top 20 as well. So I suppose it gives an indication, a good, a very good indication of what else they still need to do if they are to mount any sort of challenge, if they are to be competitive in any way um, come June the 7th or June the 8th when they take on Spain in their opener. Um, you, someone was on the bench for that match against the USA was, of course, Mpumignandi. And you and I have spoke about this lately mm -hmm. during the weekend, but there may have been people who have missed it. Um, you know, our viewers have missed it. Mpumignandi has been omitted from the squad. She's probably the biggest talking point in terms of the Banyana Banyana squad leaving mm -hmm. today. W why is such a big deal? Well, there are reports now that she might actually be back in the Banyana Banyana oh. setup. So, you know, it's a very... Um, yeah, it's a very interesting situation, but obviously after her omission, there was a lot of talk about that, and there were talks that um, some in the camp are not happy, and it seems that if um, reports are to be believed that um, she might be back in the fold. In the past, um, what Coach Desiree has done is select two or three players that she would um, use as cover players for any injured players, and it seems that that's what she's done now with two other players, with Jessica Williams as a goalkeeper, and also with... Um, 
or Simpuminyande. So they are might they might be travelling in case anything happens to any of the other players. Whether that is true or not, I mean you've already chosen twenty three players mm -hmm. and obviously some of those players, those twenty three players are actually supposed to be covered as well with so in case your goalkeepers, any of the three goalkeepers are injured, you've got any of the others to fit in there. So yeah, so apparently you know, she's back in the, or she's coming but, back in that setup. But why the, the big hoo-ha about her not being in there initially? What's so well, special she's about been, it? I, Well, no, I mean, she's been there since, uh, for 17 years, you know, and she's on 149 caps, and, and it was a big talking point with Safa that she's on 149 caps, and she just needs one more to get to 150. Two minutes and that's, you, you know, that's all. She just needs to just sort of have her number put up, walk in, 150 that's it. done, you know, and it's a big <laughs> occasion. And I know, you know, it's not about sentiment and that sort of thing, but it is still a big moment. And the fact that she was um, in the squad for all these matches um, in at the Cyprus Cup um, and, you know, at the friendly against the U.S., against Jamaica as well, but she didn't actually play. But then the fact that she was then dropped from the team altogether. Completely. Yeah, I think so. The timing of it was always the thing that I think people thought that out of sentiment or just out of the fact that she had been there the whole time, she would continue to be there. And then, of course, after the World Cup, then she talks about retirement because, you know, that's, that's what we're used to seeing, that after a World Cup, then a player is dropped, not mm. just before the World Cup. But we'll see if there's any truth to the fact that she has been roped in or brought in to hang around the team. But if she is put in, though, what does that say about mm. who's in charge of the team? Because yeah, it's, if that's, the, that's, that's what's going to come out of it. And, I mean, we've seen how when they had the latest pay dispute a few months ago after they played at the AWC and, um, you know, and players revolted, basically, and they threatened to not play, um, you know, and they threatened not to travel. There were issues around them traveling or playing in the Cyprus Cup and that sort of thing where the players just sort of say, well, we haven't been paid our money. What is happening? And then it was such a big event and Safa had to hold a press conference and to address those issues. So I think it shows, like, I mean, I know, you know, it raises questions about who is in charge, mm -hmm. but I think it's about time that maybe not specifically with the Mbumi issue, but the fact that when they are not happy because they're not treated as well as they should be or could be, that they do stand up and say, actually, we need to stand up and be counted. Again, not specifically with the Mbumi issue, because I think that might be a bit different, but just in general, that they are realizing the power that they do actually have to, to make a difference. Well, that's where we'll leave it for now, Ashoni, and I'm sure you're going to find out from Diaz what her mandate is at the tournament in as well, if oh, I'm getting any said, money. She's told us. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so we're going to chat about that a bit later on. Unfortunately, we ran out of time. That's our reporter, Shalom Tim Kuri, chatting us about Banyana Banyana send off rather to the FIFA World Cup, which will be happening later this afternoon.